when we test an embryo and we take a cluster of cells that will be the placenta, not all cells may be the same. Nor will those cells necessarily represent the inner cell area that will form baby. So we might be wrong. In other words, we might interpret something being abnormal because of the particular cell we chose from the placenta tissue when baby may be okay. And so there is a margin of error here that's at least 1%. So our worry is not just to have a healthy baby, but not to discard an embryo that might lead to one. And most recently in our discussions and debate, and where a lot of research is, is in a term where cells can be present that have different genetics within the same cluster of cells tested. Like a mural wall, which we call a mosaic of different tiles, there can be cells that have different genetics to them. Some may have the right number of chromosomes, some may not and you're wondering, well, what will the baby be like? And that's an area of great research, discussion, and debate. And this is called mosaicism. At this point, there are different technologies used to try to filter it out, like filtering out background noise to see what we're really listening to or what we're seeing. And these different technologies are competing, and we know mosaicism, various genetic backgrounds of cells, occurs naturally across all the species and within people. And as an embryo is very early in its development, it is at least maybe 50% of embryos have some degree of it. But usually those abnormal cells die away. The rest of the cells can form a whole normal baby. And things work out. So we don't know how many of us sitting here today had mosaicism at some point in our development. If a boxing analogy can be used, we were on the ropes. But we recovered and we're fine. So how do we advise a couple, if we get deepest into the weeds of mosaicism, as to whether an embryo should be put back or discarded based on limited information? And that's really the tipping point of our understanding. And folks are, in our field are very enthusiastic about this, this technology, and that's wonderful. But there are many drivers that are pushing bench-type research to the bedside and maybe doing so prematurely.